Tonight we're starting a new feature I've been looking forward to, um, and it's called The Power of One. What we do is we show you how one person in our region can really make a difference in this world. Now, right now, Kim Lengel is here to get us started with a look at a woman who used her power of one to prove to the world that disability that she shared with the president, nothing to hide. And this one is close to home for you it as is. well. It's very close to home. Those who know me know why. In the late 1960s, prominent architect Louis Kahn proposed to reinvent certain parts of New York City. His plan included a monument to Franklin Roosevelt. It ended up being Kahn's last work and when he died in Penn Station in 1974 the finished plans were in his pocket. It wasn't until 2010 that architects actually broke ground on the park but some in the disabled community criticized the plans because they thought it overlooked Roosevelt's disability. Through the power of just one person we learn tonight what it means to be enabled not disabled. I can't believe it. It's finally materializing. 69-year-old Nancy Brown will be turning 70 in just two months. The thing is, I never thought that when I was like in my 20s. Both, all of us who have had polio, didn't think we'd live to be 70, you know. And uh, so I'm shocked that I'm going to be 70. When Nancy was seven, she contracted polio, and because her doctor misdiagnosed the condition, it worsened. Unable to breathe, Nancy was put in an iron lung chamber. After about a month, doctors began weaning her off the iron lung. Turning it off for like a minute, see if I could breathe, and that was terror <laughs> when they used to turn it off. because. In the beginning, you can't actually breathe on your own. As technology improved, she became one of the first disabled patients in all of New York City and perhaps the country to become mainstreamed into her very own apartment. Welcome. You've got mail. For more than 30 years, Brown has lived on a mile-long island in the middle of the East River, once known as Welfare Island, a depository for the city's gravely sick, mentally ill, and criminally exiled. Today, it's known as Roosevelt Island, and Nancy remembers the discussions of renaming Welfare Island to Roosevelt Island. She remembers FDR's connection to polio as one of the prime factors in the island's final name change. We feel that it should be said now. Even though he was disabled, he was able to overcome that. When Nancy found out in 2010 that the proposed memorial to Roosevelt overlooked his physical disability, Nancy said that wouldn't do. It was in his whole body, and we objected to that. And we fought it as a group, the disabled. We had signs, and we went to meetings carrying signs saying that we objected to that. Nancy organized a group of other disabled residents who now call themselves members of the Roosevelt Island Disabled Association. They commissioned a sculptor who was willing to sculpt FDR in a wheelchair, a controversial decision considering almost no pictures in history to pick the president with a disability. Not only was he in a wheelchair, he was disabled, he became president, but he was a human being, enabled, not disabled. We shouldn't be looked at as far as what we can't do. We should be looked at for what we can do. And that's where the enabled, we're enabled, not disabled. The sculpture of FDR in a wheelchair is known as the FDR Hope Memorial. It will be located near the Franklin D. Roosevelt Four Freedoms Park, which is currently under construction at the southern tip of Roosevelt Island. It's slated for completion in 2013. Rich, what do you and think? And Roosevelt Island? Yes. Your uh, yes. place of residence here. Uh, amazing lady. I, Incredible. You know, and Incredible. you see these, those iron lungs and you forget. I mean, you hear about yeah. it when you actually see yeah. those chambers there. Yeah, I mean, and, and so many people see Nancy. She's a prominent figure there, you know, going up and down the, the one main street that we have. But not everybody knows her story. And once you know it, it's... It's incredible. Looks good for 70, so too. Doesn't she? Definitely. <laughs> That's a great story, Kim. Thank you very much.